Hi, this is Dr. Shapiro, and welcome to your first Pimp My Pod podcast. This is the extra sort of material to help you get through your PMP4 course. This is the final intro, final course of your uh, first two years before you get into clinics. So what's PMP4? Well, it's your last classroom podiatry course. That's pretty cool. Um, this is going to be your most advanced course, probably. Um, so that's going to create some of its own unique challenges. We're going to cover four general topics in this course, podopediatrics, tumors, trauma, and complications. You're going to have four uh, primary uh, professors in this course. There's me as your block lead. We have Dr. Juan, who will be covering uh, the podopediatrics uh, portion along with me. Uh, we will have Dr. Momer covering the complications course near the end of the, uh, of the course, and Dr. Trong, who will be talking about tumors. So you're gonna see things like children with club feet. You'll notice that this child's feet are p pointing the opposite direction, they're pointing posteriorly from him, and um, that requires surgical correction. So some of these kids with these various problems we'll talk about. We'll talk about children with something called congenital vertical talus, which is, uh, think of it as a very severe rigid flat foot deformity that is uh, a, 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 that they're born with. And we're gonna talk about surgical concepts and sort of how to take care of these kids, and how to do a physical exam, and all of those different components. We'll then move on to tumors, which will be mostly Dr. Trong, taking care of your understanding of soft tissue tumors and bone tumors, both benign and malignant. Um, this tends to be a very difficult part of the course because there's a lot of very specific detail on how to read radiographs and those kinds of things, which we'll take a good, uh, hopefully enough time on. We're gonna talk about trauma. So, you know, sports athletes such as MMA fighters are oftentimes uh, involved in traumatic injuries. You can see this is this one where he fractured his metatarsals, managed to keep uh, uh, keep fighting throughout the rest of the uh, rest of the fight uh, on his feet. Pretty strong guy. You might ask, what did these four basketball players have in mind or have in common and they all rupture their Achilles tendon. So we're going to talk about soft tissue trauma as well as bone trauma. Um, we're going to uh, delve a little bit more into um, um, advanced imaging such as MR and CT to help you determine what kinds of treatments patients need um, and how to approach them. Then we're going to finish the course up with a very quick unit on complications, and it's going to include lower extremity complications, those specific to things like surgery with their complications such as uh, infections, non-unions, and those kinds of things. Uh, we'll also talk about chronic complications, which can oftentimes re result from things like trauma. And we'll talk a little bit about medical complications, a lot of which you probably learned um, through your shared curriculum, but we'll talk about how some of those are important within the podiatric uh, kind of field. Okay, so how is this course going to be taught? And what we have is called a flipped classroom. You might have heard of this and you might even have participated in this before. Basically what this means is that you're going to receive the majority of your instruction via the um, uh, videos before you get to lecture. You'll watch those videos and then during class, we're gonna be doing workshops to help reinforce the material that you learn and help you understand it better um, and for a lo hopefully longer term. Um, th and then after class, after the course is over, you, sh you go back and you review those the things that we, that we learned in the class and it will deepen your understanding um, so let me, let's get this elephant uh, in the room out of the way. So the online lectures, I know you guys love them. They're your favorite things. I know you think they're robot people. They're real, real people who were, um, uh, who were, um, uh, you know, uh, narrating this, the lectures based off of what the faculty had, had written for them. Um, and we are going to approach it this way. So, um, let's just go with that. So uh, watch the videos beforehand. I'll show you how you can find those videos. My suggestion is to get ahead on those videos to, um, to not have to cram everything into one night before a workshop. So how do you use these lectures really? So the first thing is, let me just say, yes, they're going to happen. 
Um, I know you don't love them, uh, but for a number of reasons, this is the way we're going to run this particular course. Um, what I'd like to tell you is that I think you should watch them once and only one time, but when you watch them, you watch them in an active manner, which we'll discuss shortly. You're going to boil down that information that you receive uh, from those lectures and put them into a form that you can look back on without having to go back and constantly re-watching the lectures. It's too many of them in too short a time period. My best suggestion for you is not to get behind. Instead, get ahead as much as you can. Watch those lectures as soon as possible. When you get into the class, we will have our, our class sessions, which are usually going to be four or three hours long, depending on the day. We're going to build on the principles from those lectures, and it is imperative that you have watched and, and interacted with those lectures actively so that you can come to class prepared to get the most out of those workshops. Then when you're in the workshops, you're going to actively be working together in groups and those types of things um, and make sure that um, that you're you know you're getting everything that you that you need to. Uh, you're I want you to think about this as building skills. So everything you're going to learn here, you can think of as a skill that you're going to apply when you are in practice. Now the uh, uh, the workshops are going to be sort of structured where we have quizzes at the start. So that first fifteen minutes of basically every class, we're going to have quizzes. We're going to count the best eight quizzes of about 11 that you're going to be taking throughout the course. Uh, the quizzes at the start are for uh, part of your grade, so they're important, obviously. Those quizzes will mostly focus on the material that you had previously had in the classes that came beforehand to give you some repetition, and also on the uh, lectures and the slides that were pertinent to what workshop material is going to be coming. At the end of the workshop, after you've done it, we're going to have a quick no stakes quiz at the end of class to help reinforce what you learned during class. And I will do my best to communicate with you regarding each of the class sessions. So I will send you an email communication about the class and actually about the quizzes too, uh, the, uh, about a week before each of the classes. Now, some of the classes, you, uh, the sessions, you're going to notice they're literally on the same week, so it's kind of hard. But I will do my best to communicate as much as I can so that there are no surprises. Um, I am not trying to trip you up during any portion of this class. Uh, so I will make sure that I communicate as well as I can with you. Okay, so what about this whole Pimp My Pod podcast? Well, we've we started this a couple of years ago when I ran PMP4 before, and students seemed to like it. Uh, we tried to keep these under 30 minutes so that you're um you know you're you're getting through this material as fast as possible i try to send them out about weekly but it'll really depend more on the material that we're that we're doing that particular week the purpose of the podcast is to review and reinforce material that you're learning so the more we can repeat it the more maybe cases i can show you and some discussion about things that that will help you I will also make this worth your while to watch by giving you hints about quizzes and test questions. Um, watch these carefully. Um, sometimes I'll tell you hint and sometimes I won't. Um, but I will try to make sure that this is very helpful for you. And, you know, Lord forbid, we can actually enjoy learning a little bit. So uh, hopefully this can be a little bit of edutainment at the same time. So how does this flipped classroom and this method that we're doing potentially maximize your learning? Well, uh, the more interactive I can make these sessions for you, the more and the more feedback you can get as we go, the, the better it is for you. This is an active learning method that spaces out your learning as much as possible so that you're not just you know, cramming one thing in one time and then forgetting about it. We're going to reinforce this material as we go. It spaces out your learning. Um, we're going to be interleaving this material, which means we're using several different topics and discussing different things and then coming back to those things again later. Those allow you to actually forget a little bit, which is okay. And then as you sort of relearn, it forces you to then learn the material a little bit better. 
We're going to focus on analytical methods. So you don't need a lecture uh, like me or you know, maybe Dr. Juan to sit and give you a lecture in the classroom with the same information that you can get on one of those online lectures. Instead, you'll have the chance to interact with us during your um, workshop sessions to analyze and utilize that material in a higher level that's a little closer to clinical practice that will allow you to better understand and have a deeper kind of longer lasting sense of learning as you go. That's the goal here. Okay, so what about the syllabus? My best suggestion for you is to read it. I know um, you don't love reading these things. I don't love them either and I surely didn't like making it. Uh, but there are some important aspects of this that I, I hope will be useful for you. Um, obviously the, the learning objectives are listed in there. Um, I'm going to talk about those learning objectives in a minute. You've got some information about the course format, policies, uh, grading, course schedules, all those types of things are in there. Um, so course learning objectives. I rewrote these objectives so that the content is really going to be based on these objectives. So if you study these objectives and you think about uh, you know, whether it's a skill that I can accomplish, um, or some piece of information that I can tell back to you and actually state, then you're going to know that material and you'll do very well in the class. My best suggestion for you regarding these is to turn those quest turn those learning objectives into questions. If you can answer those questions, you're going to do great. I will literally be writing the test based off of these learning objectives. Uh, inside the syllabus, there's the course schedule. And you can see that we have the day and the time. Um, the location is actually still being determined. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be the same place that you had your PMP3 class, uh, but I will let you know as soon as I know about that. Uh, I list your faculty, who's your primary person at the top there. The format, basically they're all going to be workshops, and then the lectures that you would need to watch in order to prepare for the workshops. Now I will I will warn you now that it there are quite a number of these lectures and in some of the sections it's a giant pile of lectures. You're not going to watch them in one night and learn anything. So don't do that. Get ahead, even if it's way ahead. Go ahead. That's totally fine. Um, if you interact with that, you write your sort of one pager kind of thing, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, it will help you learn this material, and you're only going to have to watch it one time. Uh, grades for the class, we're going to have two exams. Um, one's going to cover the pediatrics and tumors, and one's going to cover the trauma and complications sections. They are not going to be cumulative, so the second exam is not going to include material from the first exam. They reach 70 points. And then the quizzes, uh, the best eight of, I believe it's 11 qu uh, quizzes that you'll be taking overall, uh, you'll get 20 points for that. And if it's helpful for those of you who want to participate, if you want to earn some extra points, um, I will give 10 extra points on each of the midterm exams for those of you who submit to me a one-pager, which is a one-page sort of very boiled down summary of the material that you need to know that you're going to use to study off of. So basically, I want you to submit your study materials to me um, before each of the midterms. So um, again, what you're going to do is uh, when you're watching a lecture, and I'll, I'll kind of go over some, some of this with my own example shortly, um, you're going to create a, a document that could be you know, one page, two sides, and it could either be a sort of summary where you write the very basics, like um, the epidemiology, you put a short statement, um, no complete sentences, single statements, very quick, fast, rough, dirty. They do not have to be terribly legible, only as long as you can read them and you can use them to study off of, that's going to be good enough for me. Uh, for those of you who might have used things like mind maps before, where you're sort of drawing pictures and making connections between things, that is perfectly fine. If you want to use that, that's great. Uh, if you have questions about that, you can speak to me individually about how to do those. Okay, so my recommended study method for you is to 
inter is to first interleave this class with your other shared courses while you're studying. So again, if you study, say, this class for 20 minutes one night, and then you you um, uh, study your FOM7 or FOM8 class for a bit, and then you come back to this for a bit, that's called interleaving, and that is a very effective way to study at the same time you're actually getting the material done. Watch the videos once, one single time, that's it, then you're done. Don't go back to them. Uh, if you feel like you need to go back, then your notes weren't very good. Um, pull the important information out of each of those things at the same time. You know, you're creating that one pager, turning things into questions using the objectives. So there'll be objectives on each of the lectures, and then there are objectives for the course. You can use all of those things to turn into questions. Um, I my suggestion for you is to think about how things are related to each other. This is a, an excellent way to study, whether it's going to be for this class or boards or the remaining classes that you have before the end of your uh, of your second year. You should be looking for, for themes, connections, ways that some things are similar to each other. Uh, as an example, for our course, um, uh, each of the podopediatrics disorders have some similarities to each other. There are some disorders that are sort of Pez Cavus kind of disorders and some that are Pez Planus disorders, and they have sort of some similarities. Similarly with trauma, you know, a broken bone is a broken bone. So uh, a, the, the fact that something's fractured is not so important. It's really more the little details about how things relate to each other. And from those relations, you can actually determine how you how you treat somebody. Do I, can I weight bear this fracture? Do I need to fix this fracture right now? Do patients do fine if I just put them in a cast or a boot? Well, all of those things that you can compare and contrast against each other will help you to better understand the material and remember it longer. The other thing you could do is to not blow off the workshops. Okay, I know they're you know, they may be long. You know, four hours is a bit of a long time. We're trying to build breaks into these, but if you focus as much as you can during the workshops, really working hard, using your brain to, to, to do those workshops, thinking through the material and coming up with the best answers that you can, then you will have done a huge amount of the work and the studying in your workshops so that you can do less of it when you're outside of class. Uh, so a couple of other suggestions I have for you now is when you're looking specifically at the lectures and you're turning things into that one pager, I think there are some things that might help you. First, you look at the major topics on that left side and it's going to list for you the primary topics that are being discussed. First, that's your first way to organize things. Okay, if something um, talks about, you know, say, APGAR score for pediatrics, well, that there's a topic for you to put onto your one pager and make sure that you know this classification to help determine uh, how healthy a child is when they're born. So that's one thing. The second thing is to ignore what I'm calling fluff. So if you see a slide and it's like this one, it's seven seconds long, what could possibly be on that slide that's going to be worthwhile? Click through it. Um, you know, uh, general descriptions of things are not going to be very useful. So get, just get through those things fast and don't waste your time. So here's an example of turning things into uh, questions. So here's the objectives slide for actually the first several of your Podopedes lectures. If you turn them into questions, I know a lot of you use Anki, go right ahead, make your Anki cards for this. Uh, those are great for uh, you know, first order kinds of details and answering ge general questions. Their mind maps are generally better for conceptual things and linking things together, creating tables to compare things. Those are all higher level things. Uh, I think Anki is a lot better for your kind of, you know, um, first order details. And then ask yourself, can I apply these? Can I, can my knowledge be applied to an actual patient? Because we're going to have cases that you're going to discuss. And I'll tell you now, a good portion of your exams are going to be case-based exams with information from those cases. Then just turn everything else into a question. And honestly, if you never took notes in this class and you just took everything you learned and turned them into questions and, and actually answer those questions for yourself every few days or so, you're going to do great in this course. 
Um, the other thing you could avoid doing is spending time on information that you already know. So as an example, this is the a slide from their Poto Pediatrics uh, uh, introductory uh, lecture. And you'll notice in this slide that it talks about the um, the general structure of a of a of a pediatric HMP and a note associated with it. Well, it's the same basic structure and information that you're going to have for the adult and that you've already learned through your shared curriculum. So why spend a lot of time on it? Don't sit there and memorize this slide. Just look for things that might be different. So you know. Um, uh, a birth history is important for children, whereas maybe not quite so much for an adult. So, um, you know, that might be one little thing to get from a slide like this, but otherwise move on. Okay, so here's an example of a one pager that I did. And this took me, I don't know, maybe this took me five, 10 minutes or so. I watched the slide, the uh, lecture that had to do with developmental hip dysplasia. And as they were speaking, I just drew these so first it talked about risk factors um, i wrote them down really quickly those are four things really easy to just memorize uh, then they talked about the physical exam in, uh, of looking at children with developmental hip dysplasia um, and i drew these little pictures and they're really all just copies from what was in the notes and i just tried to get the, the you know the basic information in those in these things so that i can look back on them <clears throat> Um, I'll note there's actually a, um, oh no, it's not, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, the, so I wanted to show you the example here just to point out one is this telescoping, which you'll see in the kind of middle of the entire, uh, slide here, that this is a way that you could examine a child where you flex the knees, you push the, um, the femur posteriorly as a child's laying down. And you see if you can, uh, push the leg down to sort of, um, partially dislocate or sublux the hip. That would tell you that they have developmental hip dysplasia. Um, and this is such a very simple a picture, but it describes a lot. So, you know, when they say pictures are worth a thousand words, there you go. And then on the other page, I have on there um, the uh, physical exam findings that are valid by the birth period. So, you know, like how old the child is, and then general treatments. You see how I really boiled that down. There isn't much to it that you have to know for that, for that type of thing. And then I also included in there um, a hip, hip x-rays, which you'll see there's gonna be several slides with a bunch of examples um, in that lecture. And I boiled it down to those sort of four kind of primary angles or relationships that they talk about in there. Obviously, I'm not expecting you to have it memorized or to use this for yourself, but this would be a very simple way for you to, within 10 minutes, you know everything you're going to need to know about de developmental hip dysplasia. Okay, so my philosophy about this course is, and, and especially about your exams, is that I am not trying to trick you. I want you to have skills that you'll take out of this class that you'll bring with you to your clinical rotations and that you're going to become expert at at some point. Not yet, but at some point. So I want you to earn a good grade in the course. I don't want anybody to fail. I don't want you to have to remediate. You have enough to worry about with boards coming up. You don't need to you know, like redo something from this course. But I also want you to learn as much as possible. So I really would like you to make the effort to not squeeze this class in at the end of, uh, you know, at the end, you've got like, you know, a night before the exam, you're cramming. It's just not going to work. Um, so. Um, I want us to make a promise to each other. And um, my promise to you is that I'm going to do everything I can in my power to make this course as good for your education as possible. Maybe entertain a little bit, if that's at all possible, uh, but to give you the best course I possibly can. Um, your promise to me is that you're going to engage with the material and be prepared for the, um, the workshop sessions to help you learn as much as you can. The more you engage with this course, the faster and better you'll learn this material. Um, what, I, what I will also tell you is that we have a very small amount of time for this course. That is not by my design. Uh, it's not by anyone in your college's design. Um, it's just the way it is. Uh, 
I would love to have more time to spread this course out and make it a little bit easier for you, but keep in mind the benefit of finishing the course early is that you get right to that board study as soon as you can. Um, I understand that there's only so much time and I totally appreciate that you have other courses as well. Hopefully your um, FOM 7 and 8 courses will be a little bit less um, challenging for you and allow you to spend a little bit more time on this course and enjoy it. So uh, that's our promise to each other. I'm, I'm not going to make you like recite it, but I would like you to try to engage as much as you can with this material and with me. Um, uh, also, uh, I want to re let you know that I consider good communication to be very important. I will do my best for that. If your class has a complaint or an issue with the course, please let me know. I will do everything I can within reason to improve things for you. Um, if you have a, a large request from your class, then I would like that to come through your class rep. If you have an individual question about the course, please feel free to email or contact me. Um, what I'll tell you now is I am not gonna listen to anyone whining or complaining. Um, nothing's perfect and um, that's life. Sometimes life sucks, but we're gonna move on. Uh, so if you're gonna whine and complain about something, I'm not the person to come to, okay? I don't wanna hear it. Uh, but if you have a reasonable request or communication or some way that I can help make this class better for you, bring it on. I wanna hear it and I'll do everything I can to help. Okay, so to finish this up, uh, my final suggestions here about how to su succeed. Study a little bit at a time. Don't cram, space things out as much as you can to give yourself the opportunity to learn. Get ahead on the videos so that they don't pile up on you. Don't procrastinate this course. You're gonna not do well on this course and at the very least you won't learn anything. If you get confused about something or need more help, ask questions. Um, I am more than happy to do extra um, you know, nighttime Zoom sessions or something like that if uh, enough people want them. Keep a good attitude. This is about your education as much as anything. And then uh, if you need to, to meet with me, please give me as much uh, notice as you can. Uh, my schedule is very busy besides running this course. There's a lot going on. Um, so emailing me is the fastest way. I check my email a few times a day. In an emergency, you can call my cell phone. It's right there below. Um, I ask you that you text or call in an emergency or if something's really wrong and you need some help. I am more than happy to help. Okay, so that's it. Um, again, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in class.